down.
Russo, the Vice President of the Planning Commission and has been a long, long time champion for medical cannabis patients here in San Francisco. I mean for the last 12 years at least. Everybody, can I hear a round of applause for yeah. Vice President yeah. yeah. I'm really proud to stand in solidarity with all of you. Many of you I met at the Planning Commission when we sit there for hours and hours in the chamber advocating for the for the uh, permitting of a lot of these uh, clubs, um, these medical cannabis dispensaries. Uh, two of them were Hope Net and um, also uh, the Vapor Room. Long live Hope Net and, and Vapor Room. And long live Hope Net and the Vapor Room. We have to make sure that despite all of this, we can find a way to make sure that the Vapor Room and HopeNet can continue to serve the medical cannabis community. I don't know how we're going to do that, folks, but we'll figure out a way in City Hall. We'll figure out a way. Yeah. One thing we lost in the Lower Hage when we lost the Vapor Room was a good neighbor. Yeah. Uh, a cannabis dispensary uh, who not only provided medicine to the community, but who gave counseling service, who gave to uh, charitable organizations, who provided public safety, eyes on the street there in the, in the neighborhood. HopeNet did the same. They had veteran services. They had social services. These are communities. And when they break up these cannabis dispensaries, they're breaking up a community. And that's one of the huge tragedies. That's one of the big losses when we see these um, folks go away. Yeah. Yeah. So finally, I want to say that I remain committed to protecting patient safe access to medical cannabis. And I stand strong behind San Francisco Medica Medical Cannabis Program. I'll work hard to see that our displaced facilities remain, remain open. All right. An attack on our permitted facilities as a direct attack on our patients. And prohibition, President Obama, enough is enough. Woo! If you can go into Afghanistan and blow up people there, and go into other parts of the world and, and show all this force, then why, can't, why do you have to show this type of force against a community in need here in your own country? It's absolutely insane, and we can't let this go on. So I do hope that President Obama shows some compassion to the people and to people throughout this country. All people need is their medicine. They need to be able to go through their daily activities and, and live in a healthy manner. So to that end, I hope that our president is able to show us some compassion. Thank you. Without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce assembly member Tom Aviano, who really needs no introduction, right? Right? Thank you, Tom. You got me, no. There we are. There we are. Yeah. Strange iPad, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, now I got it. Well, I want to offer my condolences to Melissa Haig. I'm sorry that house fell on her sister. <laughs> you know, uh, it's an important election year. We don't want the Republicans to win. But somehow the Department uh, of Justice, the IRS, and our U.S. attorneys are uh, harming Obama's chances of winning. Right. I know that this area is considered safe. However, what I'm afraid of is that people will stay home because we're so pissed off at the double messaging yeah. that Mr. Holder has done. Uh, we met with uh, uh, Melissa Haig and uh, she pretends to be, uh, what's her, Melinda? Oh, Melinda Haig, yeah, well, you know, she's very disconnected. This isn't Mayberry, this is a constituency that is enlightened. This is a constituency that wants the U.S. Attorney to go after foreclosures and the displacement of poor people. This is a constituency that wants a U.S. Attorney to address issues of immigration, uh, not 
uh, go after the issue of medical marijuana, which Woo. has stood up to, what, uh, three court challenges. So it's a distraction. It's an orchestration. Uh, but we really do need to hold the Obama administration uh, responsible. I'm not telling you not to vote for him. I am voting for him. But we need to be a voice in reshaping what's come down in the past few months. Um, uh, in Germany, they used to have something called the Stasi, you know, and they would listen to people and uh, try to uh, uh, be the thought police. Well, that's what I'm feeling about what the U.S. attorneys are doing uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, raiding uh, uh, honorable businesses uh, who pay their taxes, uh, empowering cartels and people who deal with violence by uh, looking at this issue uh, with a uh, with a, a, a buzz saw rather than a scalpel. I'm trying to do my best in Sacramento. Yeah. I think yeah. we really we uh, we really need to we really need to have some kind of uh, 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 regulations that address state issues. Uh, we need to excite our, our uh, uh, reluctant legislators, some who do not know that polling for medical marijuana, particularly in their districts, whether it's uh, Fresno or San Bernardino, is 80%. 80% and we need to activate those constituencies as well. So uh, what I say to you is, uh, yes, we cannabis. This is a really, really important issue because uh, uh, if they can do that to us, if they can do that to honest dispensaries, holding up the populist law of California, then they can do it to anybody and we are not gonna allow them. Call the dogs off. Woo! Okay, I'm going to actually turn this over to somebody that we all know and love and are in mourning for today. Um, Kathy Smith, one of the directors of the Hope Net Cooperative who had to shut their doors yesterday. Please hold on, Kathy. You know, it's really great to see everybody here and everybody out here. But you know what we need to do? Everybody that's here needs to go up to this evil woman's office tomorrow and tell them what they think. You need to get your friends up there. Your parents. Your kids. Everybody needs to go up to this evil woman's office and tell them what, she, what we think. It's the only way that's going to work. We can yell and scream all we want down here, but until we go up there and make a, a bother of ourselves, I just don't see any other way. In a peaceful way, of course. Yes, in a peaceful in a way, way, of course. I think it's really wonderful at the turnout that came out today, and I'm just so sad that they've taken away our safe access here in San Francisco. I never thought I'd see this day happen. Leave me alive, what's going on? Uh, I just don't know what to say except for thank you for all the years that everybody has given me. And well, thank you, Kathy. Kathy. Oh, you know what? You know what I'd like you all to do? You know what I'd like you all to do is vote for Moji Kush for president. <laughs> because Obama is not cutting it. He needs to make his troops get in line. He needs to make them behave. He is the commander in chief. He needs to tell Melinda Hague to back the fuck off. Thank you. Yet we have got not one single nod of recognition. Not only are we fighting here with the U.S. attorneys on the dispensary front, but as you know, the Department of Justice or the DEA just uh, 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 
refused to uh, admit a rescheduling petition. They declared that marijuana is not medicine. Once again, refused to look any, at any of the evidence whatsoever. We have the Department of the Treasury coming down, trying to make it impossible for people to get bank accounts and credit accounts. We have the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms saying that medical marijuana patients can't have guns. While at the same time, they're giving guns away to Mexican narco traficantes. This federal government.